All right, for this question, um, we need to take a look at a little bit of a geometry problem here, a little bit of, and also to look at comparing how volumes and areas scale with different values. So in this question, we're looking at a ratio of a larger cone to a smaller cone. This is implying that we're looking at volume and um, not only comparing with the, the ratio of volumes, but we have to do it in such a way where we're not actually given the dimensions of the cone because the um, problem is giving us area of two separate cones here. So let's just do a little sketch here of what we've got. So the first thing we've got is we've got a large cone. So we know a cone is made up of a circular base that has a certain area. Um, and then the individual dimensions that make it up are the radius and the height. So for this cone, um, I'm going to call this the large cone. I'm going to call this co um, cone two. So I'm going to call the height here two and the radius two. Um, and I'm just going to mark in here the circle on the bottom. And we know there is a specific area for this. So I'm going to call that area two. And then the similar cone would be the smaller one that is um, related to that cone. And again, it has a certain height and it has a certain radius. So I'm going to call this height one, radius one, and then shade in area one for the, for the bottom part there. Um, it's just important to kind of have a picture in your mind of what we're trying to compare here. Now, the thing we don't know is we don't know any of the heights or the radius. So the only values that we do know are areas. So we have to kind of think about how we're going to go about this. So the next thing um, I'd like to do is let's write down the volume of a cone. So we know the volume of the cone is pi r squared times h divided by 3. Okay, that's the general, general case for any volume of a cone. But we can also write this as the area of the circle, which I'll call letter A, times the height divided by 3. Okay, that's also equal to the volume of the cone. So now we've got a couple of things to key in on here. So let's look at the area, comparing the areas here. So our strategy here, what I'm going to do is, that's step one here, is let's compare the area of the cones. The area, it's the base area really of um, cones. So we do know um, that the area of, we're going to do a ratio here of area one, area two to area one. So we know area two right now is 2827.4, and we know area one is 1963.5. So we know those two as the values. We also know that area as a formula is pi r squared. So I'm going to compare the radius squared for um, the, the second, the first the cone A2 here, or um, volume two cone. And we're going to compare that to the radius of the smaller cone, r1. So pi's will cancel out because those are constants. Okay, that produces an equation where we get the following. Um, when we divide those two factors out, we're going to get 1.45 is equal to the radius 2 squared divided by the radius 1 squared. Now at this point, we can simplify and solve for one of the radiuses, okay? Because it's a square function, um, we'll undo that by taking the square root of both sides. So it's going to look like this. And this is going to be equal to R2 over R1 is equal to approximately 1.20. So this tells us that the radius 2 is bigger by a factor of 1.20 times R1. So this gives us a scale factor for the radius. Okay. So I'm just going to write that down here, scale factor um, for the radius. So what you need to think about here is that if the radius 1 grows by a factor of 
Okay, how much does the area grow by? How much does the volume grow by? And how much would the height grow by? Okay, so this also would tell us then if we knew the radius grows by a factor of 1.2, this would also tell us that the height would grow by a factor of 1.2. Because radius and height, these are linear, um, linear measurements. Okay, they're, they're essentially one dimensional. But does that work the same way for area and then volume? Okay, so let's just do a little chart to kind of look at this here. So if we have length, um, and we're going from R2 is equal to 1.20 times R1. Okay, so that means that if we're going to grow R1 to R2, we're going by a factor of 1.20. But what about area? So area, we know, is actually the dependent on the square of the radius. Okay, so if I was to say area was going to go from area, um, area 2 is going to be equal to the square of that term. Okay, so it's going to be 1.2 squared times area 1. Okay, because remember that area is made up of the radius being squared. So going from A1 to a Two, we have to multiply by a factor of 1.2 squared. So what would do you think volume would be? So if we're going to go from volume to, okay, now remember volume is three-dimensional. It's area times height, right? So that means it's actually the cube. All dimensions have to scale by a factor of three, okay, a cube ratio. So if we're going to go from volume 1 to volume 2, we have to multiply by 1.2 cubed. So the volume ratio is what we are looking at here in this question. So the answer to that problem is how much will, what is the factor in order to grow the volume? It is going to grow by 1.2 cubed. Okay, now if we look at the key, they do this a little bit differently. They keep, they get the same answer, but what they do here is when they go back to the length um, R2, they take 120, 1.20, and they actually make that into a fraction. So we can say 1.20 is 120 over 100, um, R1, whoops, R1, which um, is going to be our fractional scale. Um, which is actually equal in lowest terms to um, 6 over 5. So that's how they generate the fraction there. So instead of 1.2, we would put in a um, factor of um, 6 fifths cubed. So we can then say that volume 2 is equal to 6, five, six fifths cubed of volume 1. Okay, or if we want to just write it as a ratio of V2 over V1, which is what they're giving you in the answer key, it is just 6 over 5 cubed. Okay, which um, turns out to be 6 cubed is 216, and 5 cubed is uh, 25 times 5, which is 125. So that is, the, um, that is how they derive that, that fractional answer. Either answer would be acceptable. You, would, you might just have to convert it out in your calculator. But do you see, um, hopefully you see that when we go from length, um, we scale up by to the power of 1. So that's 1.20 times to the first power. Area is a function of a square. So the area grows by the length squared. And then volume is one more dimension. It grows by the cubic factor. So it is length cubed. So it's not linear in terms, it's only linear for length, but area, it goes up by a square and then volume goes up by a cube. All right.